So today, if you want to make a note, please, we're going to look at um, indicit equations, and I'll explain what they are in a second. <coughs> and then once we've looked at that, we're going to use look at the use of these in power functions. And there's an example of a power function underneath in red. A power function is one where we've got two variables, y and x, and the x variable is raised to some power, power function. And we're going to look at ways to find what the values of A and N are in this function by using logarithms. And then I'll put uh, the HU study area downstairs so we can go down there and use uh, the computers there to investigate a power function and try and find these values by plotting the function on autograph, that software for plotting graphs. So that's the plan for today. Last week, we looked at the laws of indices and we listed them. So if you missed last week, at some point you're going to need to jot those down, but just as a reminder, if the base is the same, then when I multiply, that means I can add the powers. That's the first law of indices. If the base is the same, A, then if I divide one number by another, I end up subtracting the powers. And we looked at how we could use these two to actually come up with others. This is an important one. If I've got one, a number raised to a power, and then I raise that to a further power, I end up just multiplying the powers. We'll be using that idea today. By extension, we talked about logarithms, extended that idea, and talked about the logarithm being a power and the base is normally 10. So if you find the logarithm of a, your number using, of a number using your calculator, you're finding the power of 10 that will give that number. So, for example, the logarithm of 3 You can catch up in a second, Cameron. Just keep up to the try and keep up with the pace, please. So, logarithm of three. What would we do on the calculator? Yep. Logarithms of three, as Daniel says, what's always missed off and is implied is that there's a ten there. So when you use the log button in your calculator, you're finding the logarithm to the base ten, which is. Point okay. 0.4771 to so four significant figures. That's a power of 10. That means that ten to the power 0 0.4771 is 3. In other words, we're turning a number 3 into a power of 10. And that means we can use the laws of indices. If we're turning it into powers, instead of multiplication, we add. Instead of division, we subtract. And so we come up with these laws of logarithms that we wrote down last week. Log of A times B equals log of A plus log B log of A divided by B is log A minus B. And finally, the one that I want to focus on particularly today, this one, and its use in power functions. If I turn a number into a logarithm, then if that's raised to a power, that power becomes a multiplication, and we can then find out what N is. And that's what we're going to be doing. Okay. Here's an example of an indicit equation. So this is an indicial equation. And it's outlined in the textbook. It's work problem 22. I'm not exactly sure which page it's on, but we can find out a bit later. And the reason why I've used it is because you might decide you don't want to write this down. You just want to watch what's going on. You can always look in the textbook at how it's done and look at this little video clip, okay? So this is an example of an indicit equation. 2x equals 3. 
sorry, T to the power X equals three. It's an inditted equation because the thing we're trying to find, X, is in the power, in the index, in this uh, inditted equation. And so what we do to solve it, and we always do this when we solve equations like this is, as soon as you see the thing we're trying to find in the power, what should pop into your mind is, I'm going to take logarithms of both sides. So I'm going to do this. It's both sides of an equation. I can do anything I like, as we've seen already. We can add anything we can like. We can multiply by anything we like, and so on. We can square one side, so long as we square the other. We can find the logarithm of one side, so long as we find the logarithm of the other. And that's what we do here. We say the logarithm of 2 to the power x is the logarithm of 3. And that means, using that law of logarithms that we were just looking at, this one, that we've now got a power situation, and that power can come down and become a multiplier. And that's exactly why we do it. So if we go back to this, that means that we can write two, uh, x times the logarithm of 2 equals the logarithm of 3. And can you see now what we do to find x? Divide both sides by the logarithm of 2. So x turns out to equal the logarithm of 3 divided by the logarithm of 2. And then you get your calculator out and work it out. What's the logarithm of 3 divided by the logarithm of 2, please? Just before this. So x equals 1.584 to four significant figures. Remember we were saying last week, hold on to the significance because these are powers. So a small change in the power means a big change to the number, especially if the base is 10. But how do we check that that was right? be three. We need to check. You can't always look at a textbook or ask me if the answer's right. If you're actually having to do this as part of a calculation, you need to know that it's right yourself. So, as suggested, two to the x should equal three. So, two to the power, 1.584 is, and you put that into your calculator, and hopefully you'll get the answer three. Look at this one. 5 to the power x plus 1 equals 36. Is that an indicted equation? Is it an indicted equation? Yeah, because x is in the power. Okay? So what's the first step? We always do this. What's the first step? Log both sides. Okay? So we can then use the third law of logarithms, as it's called, and bring that power down and turn it into a multiplier. So, logarithm of 5 to the x plus 1 equals the logarithm of 36. Which means we can bring the x plus 1 down and turn that into a multiplier. And it's perfectly acceptable to just go straight from that step to that step. Because as soon as you've taken the logs of both sides, that means that we can use the law of logarithms and bring that power down. So we can do two steps in one almost. Yep. Yep. Can you what, sorry, Danny? Good. Now divide both sides by log 5 and we get x plus 1 equals log 36 divided by log 5. Log 5. Finally, to get x, take away the 1. So x equals log 36 divided by log 5 minus 1. And so once we've found the logarithms to bring the power down, what we then do is what we'd normally do, solving equations. It's just 
add, subtract, just things to both sides, divide, multiply by both sides by something to get x on its own. And then we can work out what that is and then put it back in to check. So we've got x equals 1.226. one point two two seven if we round correctly and to check again we put that one point two two seven back in here so five to the power two point two two seven should give you thirty six as a check always check right let's look at this one together make a note of it so first step logarithm of both sides which gives us this which means we can now do what? That gives us bringing the powers down and turning them to multiply that line. x plus 1 times log 2 is 2x minus 5 times log 3. At this point, we've got an equation to solve. If I were to use my calculator and find the logarithm of 2, it would be a decimal number, as we've just been doing a few examples of. Long, we'd have to round, okay? So would this be a long decimal number, we'd have to round. So if I expanded out the brackets, which you might want to do, I'm going to have a, this awkward decimal number multiplied by each of these. And that just makes it long-winded. So a good idea would be to divide both sides by log 2 or divide both sides by log 3, and then you've just got one decimal number to worry about when you expand out the brackets. So I would recommend doing that. The only final question is which way? Because if I divide both sides by log 2, I'll get rid of that there, and then I'll have 2x minus 1 multiplied by some number when I multiplied out the brackets. If I went the other way, I'd get rid of the log 3 here, and I'd have some number multiplied by x plus 1. And that's much easier to do, isn't it? x plus 1 times this number than that. So small points, but... If I now divide both sides by log of 3, I make life a lot easier for myself when I then carry on and try and solve to find x. And there's less rounding going on, so I'm more likely to have a, a more accurate answer. So, the next step would be divide both sides by the log of 3. And I can write x plus 1 times log 2 over log 3 equals... 2x minus 5. So now we can find log 2 over log 3 to an appropriate accuracy, and we get... So holding four significant figures for accuracy, we get 0 0.6309 brackets x plus 1. I've only put that in front because I think it looks better in front. I usually, usually put numbers in front of brackets. Equals 2x minus 5. Now what we've got to do is expand out that bracket, which is... You just write down the answer. There's no multiplication to do. I've got 0 0.6309 lots of x plus 0 0.6309 equals 2x minus 5. So now I expand out the bracket. What we do next is try and get all the x's on one side. So sort of collect together the x's. That means I can either subtract 2x from both sides which gets rid of that 2x and means I've got to subtract 2x from here. Well, that will leave minus numbers. That's probably not a good idea. So, leaving x positive, I subtract 0.6309x from both sides. So, that's going to get rid of that and I have to subtract 0.6309 from 2 to see what's left on this side. So, we end up with 0.6309 equals whatever 2 minus 0 0.6309 is. So that leaves 1.3691 lots of x minus 5. Now add 5 to both sides. So 5.6309 equals 1.3691 lots of x. Pardon? And now, with virtually there, we've just got to divide both sides by 1.3691, and we've got x. So x equals 5.6309 uh, divided by 1.3691.
So just to recap on this question then, because this is a bit awkward, this question. To solve inditted equations of this form, where x appears on both sides, involves taking the logarithm, so that's the first step basically, take the logarithm, so that we end up with this. We've got no powers now, we've just got multiplication, this line. And then it's a case of solving the equation. What makes it awkward to look at is the fact that we've not got easy numbers here. These turn out to be decimal numbers, so getting the x's together and the numbers together looks a bit more awkward, but it's just the same as you would do for a straightforward equation. You get all the x's on one side, and then all the numbers on the other, and then you get to here, and then you can divide, and you've got x. So what you need to do now is a bit of practice. So if you turn in your textbooks to... I think it's around about page 100, exercise 54 on indicted equations and have a look at some of those. So if we look at x number 4 in the exercise, then this one has an x, but this time the x is the base rather than the power, but the start point is exactly the same. Logarithm of x to the 1.5 equals logarithm of 14.91. Because I've taken logarithms, the 1.5 can come down and become multiplied. So the 1.5 times the logarithm of x is the logarithm of 14.91 over 1.5. So I write that. 1.5 times the logarithm of x is the equal to log 14.91. Then you do divide both sides by 1.5. That's what I was thinking of. So the log of x equals log of 14.91 over 1.5. So we we'll work out what that is. What's the log of 14.91 over 1.5? Which turns out to be 0 0.7823. Now we just need to think about what logarithms mean. Remember, this the logarithm of x is this, and the logarithm is the power of 10. So, to find out what x is, 10 to the power 0.783. So that's the difference. When uh, x is in the base like that, we need to then find 10 to the power, but we won't get to that yet. So 10 to the power 0.783 is what x is. is. So x turns out to be 6.058, but you need to look at more of those, okay? Probably on your own, just to get start to get your head around these existing equations. Try looking at the video clips, I think there's a few on there. If you get stuck, ask for help, we look at you or someone can tell us, okay? But if there are no immediate questions on that, I want to move on now to look at the a use of these indicative equations, or these logarithm functions rather. Uh, to look at power functions.